Dropshipping is morally unacceptable and there's a lot of things wrong with it. It's also pretty illegal. You really should not be dropshipping. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard this either from somebody, read it in the comments, or just come across a statement somewhere. And today's video is going to focus on pretty much just that. The morality, the ethics, and the legality behind dropshipping. Call your lawyer. Better call Saul! <laughs> so in today's video, we're going to answer the internet's biggest question. Is dropshipping ethical? Is it legal? And is it morally right? So to answer this question, the first thing that we need to do is find out what exactly is dropshipping. So dropshipping in itself is really something very basic. It is a fulfillment business model where you're going to have your own online store. Somebody comes to your store, they make a purchase. Let's say they buy a pair of shoes for $150. Then you're going to go ahead and take care of that order by simply going to your supplier, giving them your customer's information, and then your supplier is going to ship the product directly to your customer. So that way you're not really doing anything. What you're doing is finding these different products, putting them in front of the eyes of your customer, having them make the purchase and then sending that order to your supplier. So really there's nothing wrong there, is there? So your customer pays 150 for the shoes, your supplier charges 50, the remaining hundred dollars is your profit. That's it. Now, what are some of the different advantages of drop shipping? Well, there's actually quite a few. For one, there's low to practically no investment, depending on where you're selling. So if you're selling on a website like Shopify or Wix, you're going to have to pay your monthly fees and maybe even a domain name. But if you're selling on a website like eBay or even on Amazon, you don't have to pay for anything up front. You don't have to pay for any upfront inventory. The only time that we pay for any inventory or any products is when we receive the order ourselves. So because we're not paying any upfront costs for any inventory, we also don't have to deal with any inventory to begin with. We don't have to store any inventory anywhere. Again, our suppliers are taking care of this for us. They're storing all of the inventory. And that in itself makes it pretty easy to get started. It makes it a very compelling business model for a lot of people to jump into. Because really, there's a lot of upside, there's barely any downside, and your investment, it's minimal. Also, once you start to get the ball rolling in your business, it's pretty easy to scale, either by increasing the budget for your ads, making a bit more content for your content marketing, or simply adding more products to your store. Besides that, like I mentioned earlier, order fulfillment is super easy. You're not doing any of the fulfilling. Who's doing this is a supplier. They're the ones taking care of the orders. They're the ones that are packing everything up, printing out the shipping label and delivering everything to the postal service. And last but not least, one of the last advantages that is probably the biggest one in the entire business, the one that's the most compelling to people and draws them in is the freedom, not just freedom of time, but freedom of where to work. So when you start your dropshipping business, you can start it from anywhere. I can get started from right here where I'm at right now. I can get started from a Starbucks, from any other coffee shop, from my parents' house, from my college dorm, wherever it is that you are, you can start your dropshipping business, even if you're on vacation. And on top of that, you also have the freedom of time because you can start it and you can work on it whenever you have any free time to begin with. You're not stuck in your nine to five grind. You're not stuck between eight and five working on this in particular. You can work on this whenever you want, wherever you want. Now, some of these advantages actually pose somewhat of a disadvantage. So the fact that there is such a low barrier to entry, like I mentioned earlier, draws a lot of people in. So there's a lot of competition in the space, but that's not to say that you can't succeed in it. With dropshipping, you can easily succeed as long as you're doing the proper product research, you're getting the right products, and you're not just trying to sell anything. And with that also comes problems with, let's say, quality or shipping times. So because there's so many people in the space, there's going to be some suppliers that you source your products from that are not going to be very good to say the least. Sometimes they might even be fake suppliers. In this case, you're going to be combating either very bad quality products or products that never shipped out in the first place. But an easy way to combat this is for one, check out the suppliers, check out the reviews, check out the different products that they have and check out the reviews that the products have themselves. Also, there's a lot of resources at your fingertips that you can use to find the right suppliers. For one, you can check out our blog section over at autodias.com or just simply check out this YouTube channel where we have tons of different videos on not just the best products to dropship, but also the best suppliers to source them from. It can also be kind of difficult to start to build a brand if that's what you're going for, but it's not impossible. There's going to be certain suppliers that you can actually reach out to and have them brand your products. AutoDS being one of them. So if you sign up with AutoDS right now, you can get the trial period for two weeks for just $1. 
And with the AutoDS marketplace and private suppliers, you have access to branding. So with some of our private suppliers, you're gonna be able to include one, a custom thank you card in each one of your orders with your logo on it. Not just that, but your logo is also gonna be printed on the invoice. So everything kind of works together to be able to create more of an impression on your customers. And trust me when I say the custom thank you card, the customers love it. It's very personal to them and whenever they see it, they think that it's you that's packaging the entire product or the entire order and including that note for them. Another big disadvantage is the actual processing of orders. Now, I know that I said at the beginning that pretty much everything is streamlined, but you do need to place that order with your suppliers. So when somebody places the order in your store, then you need to go to your supplier's website and then put in your customer's details and add the item to the cart and then purchase it from your supplier and then have it shipped. So it can be a bit tedious and there's a lot of room for error, but once you start scaling, once you start getting more and more orders, or simply if you're already signed up with AutoDS, you can enjoy and you can benefit largely from automation. So with AutoDS, you're able to automate that entire middle process. You can really automate the entire thing from importing your products to the entire order fulfillment. But right now in particular, what we're discussing is the order fulfillment. So what happens is instead of you having to go to your supplier to be able to place that order, AutoDS will do that for you. So you're not gonna have to do anything. You're not gonna have to log into your supplier's website. AutoDS is gonna take care of this for you, eliminating the risk for any user error and really saving you tons of time because ordering one, two, maybe five different products, it's not gonna take too long. But once you start to get more and more orders, you start to place maybe 10, 20, 30 orders, you're gonna be stuck in your supplier's website for a few hours just doing the same repetitive task over and over. And last but not least, customer service. So customer service is a huge disadvantage because the entire thing, the entire job is on us. So if there's any questions about any orders or any products, you're gonna be the one that's answering those questions. But after a while, after you start to make some money, it would be very beneficial for you to hire a virtual assistant. You can go on a website like Fiverr and look for different virtual assistants and check out the different rates based on different experiences. There, you can go ahead and hire one and they can take care of the entire customer service aspect for you. Now, let's get down to the burning question, or at least one of them. Is dropshipping legal? Yes, it is 100% legal. Dropshipping is a business model. And honestly, a lot of big companies, they take advantage of dropshipping. Take Foot Locker, for example. There's some products that they don't keep inventory. There's certain shoes that they're not going to keep inventory in their stores or even on their websites. So what happens is when you place an order with them, that order just gets rerouted to their supplier, whether that be Nike, Air Jordan, New Balance, Vans, whoever it is. Some shoes, they're not going to be stocked in the store or in their online warehouse. They're going to be drop shipping some of these products by ordering it from their suppliers and sending it to you. So what's the difference between them doing it and you doing it? There's absolutely no difference. Dropshipping is 100% legal, but there are a few aspects in dropshipping that can become illegal if you choose to make them illegal. Now, what do I mean? There's gonna be certain things that you should not be dropshipping. One of them being copyright items, two being branded items, three being knockoffs, and four being any products that could potentially be hazardous and adult products. So there's gonna be certain product categories that you wanna stay away from because they can land you in certain hot water. Now, selling things that are copyright, that's a big no. That will get your store shut down almost immediately, depending on where you're selling. If you're selling on Shopify, you can get a cease and desist letter from the company's attorneys, whereas in Etsy, they're just gonna take down your listings and they could potentially just close down your store. Same goes for eBay. And don't even get me started with Amazon. Now, the other question, is it ethical? So my answer to this is, yeah, it is 100% ethical because, again, big companies take advantage of this. Pretty much every single company takes advantage of the dropshipping business model to an extent because the only difference between dropshipping and your typical retail business model is going to be purchasing inventory up front. Whereas dropshippers, they don't purchase inventory up front. Instead, they just facilitate the transaction between the customer and the supplier. So really, there's nothing morally wrong with it. There's nothing ethically wrong with it. Because at the end of the day, what's happening is, again, you're just facilitating that transaction. You're putting the products in front of your customers for your suppliers. You're the middleman. Just like Foot Locker is the middleman for Nike. I've seen a lot of Nike superstores or a lot of Nike outlet stores that I can go to and purchase my shoes directly. But 
a lot of times I also go to Foot Locker where I'm going to go purchase my shoes there and they have a massive inventory of multiple brands. So again, in this case, instead of having Foot Locker, you know, reroute your order to Nike, which again, sometimes they do. If you go into the store to make a purchase, they purchased all these products in wholesale from Nike and then they're just reselling them to you. So what's really the big difference between you purchasing the product from your supplier and sending it directly to your customer? Is it going to be more ethically or more morally right if you just purchase in bulk and then ship it out yourself? There's no difference. It's, it's pretty much the exact same thing, except on a different scale. Now, one of the things that people find ethically wrong with this is the fact that they don't tell people that they're drop shipping. Typically speaking, a drop shipper is not going to promote the fact that you know, I'm sourcing my products from this supplier to give them to you at a little bit of a marked up price. No, that's not how business works. Same thing goes for your regular brick and mortar stores too. Foot Locker is not going to be telling you I'm sourcing my products from this particular factory in, I don't know, Taiwan or something. It's just not going to happen. Suppliers are never disclosed, no matter the scale of the business. And trust me, a lot of these people, a lot of these people that are saying that this business is morally or ethically wrong, get them in front of a few suppliers and have them start facing the problems that us dropshippers or business owners are facing. Yes. Then they're going to realize how hard it is to find the right suppliers, how hard it is to find reliable suppliers with good quality products. Amen, bro. And it's not that easy. Anybody from the street can easily go to AliExpress and just purchase from anyone but they're going to be purchasing pretty much in the dark. They're not going to know who they're purchasing from. They're not going to know if the quality is good. They're not going to have tested these different suppliers. Whereas a drop shipper has, they've made all of these mistakes. A lot of the times they've purchased bad quality products by accident and have learned how to spot bad suppliers with bad products and how to filter out the good ones. So your average Joe Schmo that just goes to Amazon to purchase things doesn't know these things. So really, at the end of the day, you're filtering out all of the bad suppliers, finding out the good quality ones, and then putting them in front of the eyes of the customer so that way they don't have to go through that trouble. You're really facilitating the entire process. Now, how can you start to build a proper and ethical and morally right dropshipping store? Well, doing so is super easy. Really, the first thing that you need to do is make sure that you know your local laws and regulations. So make sure that wherever it is that you're dropshipping, whether it's the US, the UK, Europe, Canada, South Africa, wherever it is you're dropshipping, make sure that you're following the local rules. Make sure you know all of the different regulations. And most importantly, make sure you're paying your taxes because that's one huge thing that people don't understand. Apparently, some people for some reason think that because you're a dropshipper, you're doing everything morally wrong and you're not paying your taxes. You're selling things you're not supposed to. And, you know, it kind of just all affects you. You know, things that from a business standpoint are wrong, things that can really land you in hot water. So as business owners, we want to make sure that we dot our I's and cross our T's. And knowing the local regulations and laws, as well as paying our taxes, is probably one of the biggest things that you need to take care of. Besides that, you also need to build a solid foundation to build the trust in your customers before they make a purchase from you. So what do I mean by this? One, make sure your store looks aesthetically pleasing. Make sure it's easy to navigate and doesn't look like a scam. A lot of people just make any random store, put on some random colors. They don't even bother with a logo and the pictures that they upload are horrible. The descriptions are just everywhere and a bunch of random words. People aren't going to trust this. People are going to jump to this website and they're going to immediately jump off because that does look like a scam. So you always want to make sure that everything that you're building on your Shopify store, if that's where you're selling, is acceptable and looks good. One of the easiest ways you can go ahead and do this is through AutoDS. AutoDS has an AI Shopify builder where you can create your entire store. It'll include a logo, a very easy to navigate layout, matching colors, matching brand colors. Everything looks very good and aesthetically pleasing. And on top of that, it even includes winning products. So you're going to be set up already with 10 winning products that you can drop ship in whatever niche that you choose. If you want a little bit more information on that, just check out this video right here. The link to it is going to be in the description below. In it, I explain everything that you need to know about building your Shopify store with AI. Now, if you use that AI service, which is completely free if you're an AutoDS member, then the following things that I'm about to list also become a lot easier because they're included in the entire package or in the pre-built store that you get. So another way to start building up your foundation or start building up trust in your customers is to include the right pages in your dropshipping store. For one, include all of your different policies, your shipping policy, your return policy, an about us, a frequently asked questions page, your returns and refunds, and your terms of service. 
Within all of these pages, you need to specify all of your different terms. So on your shipping page, make sure that you mention how quick you're going to ship your products and what shipping methods you offer. In the returns and exchanges, list your return or your exchange policy and so on. These are all crucial pages that customers actually look for. And it's crazy because I didn't think that customers actually looked for this because when I first started, I was omitting these pages. I wasn't including them because I thought this is so much extra work and people don't even read these pages. But then after a while, after I started running ads on some of my dropshipping websites, then I started reading some of the comments on the ads and people were saying there's no return policy. Be careful when you purchase your products. It's a little bit sketchy. And I thought, whoa, I guess it I guess it really is needed. I guess people actually do look for these things and they do. Now, adding to this, like I mentioned earlier, make sure you go with the right dropshipping suppliers. Choosing the right suppliers is crucial because if you have bad suppliers, then you have bad quality products or you have products that ship in a month and you don't want that. You want suppliers that are going to have one good quality products and two fast shipping. Oh, and three good customer service, because remember, as I always talk about and I always mention, our customer service is a reflection of our suppliers customer service. So if it takes our suppliers two days to get back to us, that's how long it's going to take us to get back to our customers if they have a question. And that's way too long. You want to make sure that when it comes to any questions or concerns that your customers have, that you limit that time to one day at the most. Anything more than that is unacceptable. The customers are either going to completely forget that they got with you in the first place and they sent you a message or they would have already gone somewhere else and made the purchase elsewhere. So now I leave you with a question. What do you think of the subject? What do you think of the matter at hand? Do you think dropshipping is legal? Do you think that it's, well, I mean, it is legal, but what are your thoughts on it? Do you think it's morally acceptable? And do you think it's ethical? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. I would love to hear what you think of this subject and everything that we talked about in today's video. Also, have you ever had any customers that have complained to you about the fact that you're a dropshipper? I really wanna hear all of your experiences. So drop them down in the comments below. Huge thank you to everyone for watching, especially if you made it all the way to the end. As always, make sure you smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and ring that little bell notification so you don't miss out on any future videos. My name is Mario with AutoDS, and I'll catch you all next time.